Good morning, Paul and Bargav. Today is Tuesday, July the 25th, and here's the heads-up briefing for today. In Australasia and the Pacific Islands, we covered eight issues. In North Asia, nine, nine issues. In Southeast Asia, 23 issues. In South Asia, 19 issues, along with the major developments in the EMEA region. Okay, excellent. Basil, thanks for filling in for that. Go ahead. Starting off with Australasia and the Pacific Islands, in PNG, Police Commissioner David Manning issued a directive to Bank of Papua New Guinea on July 22nd to immediately facilitate foreign exchange to Puma Energy for the purchase of crude oil and petroleum products. Look, it's very interesting that leadership and direction has to come from the extremely competent David Manning, the police commissioner. Unfortunately, he's got his work cut out for him doing security amidst what is a horrible security paradigm with um, government invertly proportionately competent to the level of the, uh, the level of the aggression and organization of the rascals. And so with challenges of resourcing, a lack of government and a horrible security paradigm, the last thing Manning needs to be doing is having to get involved in economic mismanagement not only by banks, but by the government, which he uh, has to unfortunately serve. Thank you. In North Asia, uh, North Korea fired two ballistic missiles towards its eastern coast yesterday in protest of the arrival of the U.S. Navy's nuclear-powered submarine in South Korea. Okay, thank you. In Southeast Asia and in Indonesia, the Labour Party and the Indonesian Trade Union Confederation announced that they will hold demonstration outside the Constitutional Court in Jakarta today. Uh, the demonstrations will call on authorities to repeal the omnibus law on job creation, the health law, as well as revoke the presidential th threshold from 20% to 0%. Okay, look, and pipe dreams are a wonderful thing. What I would like to do, though, is ensure that we check if there's much of a demonstration, how many people, and is it garnering any momentum? I suspect the answer is no, it's not, but I'd like someone to come back to me and verify that either late today or tomorrow morning, okay? Okay, sure, Paul. Uh, in Thailand, the office of the Ob Ombudsman yesterday requested the Constitutional Court to instruct the Parliament to postpone the next Prime Ministerial vote scheduled for July 27. Look, and I suspect this is yet again skullduggery. Obviously, the established powers to be have a vested interest in allowing the Kun Peter and the skullduggery of not allowing him to form a coalition to gain or a little bit of advantage by time, by doing what they often do, finding ways to deflect, delay, and in short, play a game for themselves with little regard to the country or the integrity of the system. The democracy is once again shown to be a farce, but it is what it is, and we do need to monitor it carefully. Once we know how long they're going to delay it for, then let's have an assessment meeting and draw some deductions from that. And I'll ask you to tee that up with Uday when he's back on deck. Thank you. Okay, sure, Paul, as well. Uh, in South Asia, in Pakistan, the Election Commission of Pakistan issued non-bailable arrest warrants against former Prime Minister and Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf Chief Imran Khan yesterday. That's interesting. The party's top leadership have fled Imran Khan's uh, side and they uh, they are unlikely to come to his support. However, what would be interesting is to see if Imran Khan will be able to muster any support at the ground level if, if their supporters will come back and create violence like, like we saw uh, a month ago. So we'll keep a close eye on this, Vasu. Sure, Bargav. Uh, concerning Pakistan and Afghanistan, Pakistani armed forces yesterday carried out rocket attacks against the hideouts of the Tehreek-e uh, Taliban Pakistan militant group in the Kund area, Barmal district, district in Paktika province in, Af in Afghanistan. It is still unclear if there were any uh, casualties, and it's important to note that the Paktika province borders Pakistan's Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and Balochistan provinces. The border between Afghanistan and Pakistan is a namesake line drawn by the British. 
in reality on the ground there may be a few check posts by the pakistani military but it is porous in nature the entire border and some would even argue that there isn't any border however the pakistani military is getting a taste of its own medicine because they were happy when the the major issue of insurgency was being created in afghanistan and in kashmir when it came down to hound them in their own backyard now they are trying to stifle it with uh, you know with rockets and what not so uh, this is a classic case of a proxy war gone wrong or biting back onto the benefactors that is pakistani military they're happy as long as the islamists are in somebody else's backyard the moment they come to their backyard to challenge their power they'll have such issues in india the security environment in manipur remains tense amid protests ongoing attacks and conflict between the cookies and the metis at least 131 people have been killed and nearly 60000 people have been displaced since the clashes started the issue here is unlikely to die down anytime soon and the government has already deployed central paramilitary forces and the army uh, despite withdrawing certain components of armed forces special powers act in the state of manipur what's more uh, vital is that we track its influence on rest of the northeastern region uh, because it, it's a fairly big region but equally uh, equally tense that's well noted barga uh, moving over to the emea region in israel the parliament yesterday passed the controversial judicial reforms bill around 64 parliamentarians voted in favor of the bill all right thank you concerning uh, the russian ukrainian conflict the white house yesterday said said that it does not support ukrainian attacks inside the russian mainland um this came actually after two ukrainian drones damaged two buildings in an attack in southern moscow Meanwhile, uh, Kiev said that a Russian drone attack destroyed Ukrainian grain warehouses near the Danube River. Uh, the Danube River sits between the uh, the southern coast or the southern city of Odessa and the Romanian border, where Romania is a, a North Atlantic Treaty Organization member as well. This is a case where White House wants to pay a lip service and say they do not support it, but uh, it's it's fairly open and well known that. where the tech is coming from that's pretty much it from my end but so thank you yeah i i agree with you um bargo it's becoming absurd that america that's played in ukraine since 2014 has encouraged the world to send weapons is probably purposefully destabilizing europe by creating a war in europe and then in the name of peace bunting the nato border up against russia which is clearly an existential threat um to them to say that they're not involved in a certain little tactical situation can't be seen as anything other than this guy is stupid propaganda that you wouldn't expect anything better coming out of langley or the capital hill where absurdity reigns and arrogance is supreme and so ridiculous and i think unfortunately America has unwittingly sorted out a lot of Russian corruption amongst their defense force supply chain. It has forced them to train hundreds of thousands of new troops, modernize tanks, and catch up with the rest of the world in preparedness. And I would say, based on being more than admitting it's out of weapons, America also now being openly um, concerned about the, how they've run down Uh, missiles and various other types of weapon systems um, you can't help but think america's doing what it does all around the world going in with a certain intent having powerful people without a matching brain an inability to think strategically beyond the media if we do this this will happen but they can't see the 2030 phase spin off it once again you feel that between nato and america and the five eyes so righteous and total arrogance runs supreme and they're ultimately going to learn about the eastern ways of karma which are all going to come back on them and unfortunately normally that's delayed 10 or 50 years but now i think their days of realizing their own strategic ineptitude are going to be much closer we see now that 
Uh, the BRICS organization has another 40 applicants willing to join. At what point can America have both a change of government and a change of attitude? Um, unfortunately, the changes of government tend to um, lock them in for other people wanting power for money to feed oligopolies in the States, no different to what happens in Indonesia and the Philippines. But it's become absurd to watch them start a war, avoid Ukraine and Russia having a peace deal, overriding that, sending in British diplomats to destroy a peace deal, and 18 months later, not my own. Um, I'm getting tired of hearing about the long awaited Ukraine counteroffensive. It's absurdity that what we are seeing is the Wagner group, group amassing in Belarus and uh, Poland looking to sharpen its tally hose, but I think the reality is they're all going to learn a little bit about their own relevant capabilities and misguided agendas. Thank you, gentlemen.